It's time for the Daily Stand-Up Podcast presented by Agile Dad with your host, Lee Henson. Without any further ado, let's get started. One of our loyal subscribers sent in an article that they wanted me to review, and I found this article interesting uh, for multiple reasons. It talks about agility and leadership and a need for true agility, and the article took a couple of different turns. So I thought we'd just start by diving into the article and uh, making pivots and adjustments from there, and I'll chime in with my thoughts as always. So let's do this. It says, in recent times, Agile and Scrum have been attracted as game changers in project management, but the reality often falls short. Hmm, that's interesting. Uh, Let's see where it goes. A significant amount of resources have been wasted on these methodologies with questionable returns. We see individuals in large companies engaging in repetitive tasks, using buzzwords, and getting lost in endless meetings. This has led to frustration amongst many skilled software engineers pushing them to leave their jobs and feeling constrained and not utilized. Okay, I'm gonna pause here. I'm concerned, (laughs) I'm deeply concerned. What I found to be true through my coaching and training in organizations is almost the polar opposite. Uh, What I've seen is more times than not, Agile really works. I think the problem is people don't understand what Agile really is. A lot of people, when I when I teach a certified Scrum Master, a certified Scrum Product Owner class, a lot of people are shocked when they see me pop up an image of the entire Agile landscape and all the things that are inclusive in Agile. Because I think that people only focus on the delivery aspects of Agile, which includes build out and you know proper building of features, and they don't always focus on all the pieces of Agile that make Agile click. And those are the things that lead to repetitive tasks and people just trying to push things through and people feeling like they're uh, constrained, uncomfortable, not utilized. So I guess what I'm trying to say is the description in this first section sounds more like an anti-pattern and a pattern to me based on what I've seen. Let's continue. It says, this situation brings to mind common defenses like it's not the system, it's the context or the system is perfect. It's the people who are failing it. These arguments miss the point and sound like uh, sound the, the underlying issues with Agile. Okay. And he goes on to say, perhaps it's time to revisit the foundational principles of software development we did over a decade ago. Back then, we aimed uh, outcome of the product. Okay. So I think I see where this is going. And if it's going that direction, I could probably hop on board. But I think... The very next thing is, you know, it's not system, it's the context, the system uh, is perfect, it's the people who are failing it. I, I don't know what companies you're doing this work for, but I'm just not seeing these same things in, you know, 40 of the Fortune 100 companies, right? I, I'm just, I'm not seeing this. So the goal should be the driving force behind any team's efforts. Under the context of Agile, many managers have lost vision of this objective by focusing more on processes than on the results. Okay, there I can draw a line. So I think that a lot of leadership spend so much time focusing on how they're going to do Agile that they lose sight that Agile means we're going to focus on outcomes and limiting work in progress, not cranking out work for the sake of ensuring that we're doing the process correctly. So the real nature of agility is behavior driven, particularly by the behaviors of leaders. Yet this is where the Agile manifesto falls short. It lacks governance provisions and fails to set a clear direction or end goal, leading to a blur between flux. Okay, I'm not even going to finish the sentence. (laughs) I think the Agile Manifesto did a really good job of talking about these things. The deal is too many people don't understand the Agile Manifesto or there again. Uh, Or if they do understand the Agile Manifesto, they interpret it to mean what they think it should mean. And they're not drawing focus on the other piece. And when I say the other piece, I'm talking about they're not focused on the principles, the 12 principles to support the manifesto. And I think that if you look at that, it has a pretty good outline for what leadership needs to do. For Agile to work, we need leaders who understand what it means to be Agile. They should help their teams work towards setting clear goals and make sure they finish limited work in progress. That means that they're focused on outcome with a purpose and not on output just to crank things out. It's the only way they're ever going to hit their target. So whether it's software development, hardware development, entertainment industry, insurance, finance, regulatory, medical, I don't care where you are, 
uh, there's a common misunderstanding about what it means to be agile. Agility is seen as delivery, delivering features efficiently. And while this perspective does hold some truth, it overlooks all of the ideation and initiation. It overlooks all of the all of the discovery process. It, it's taking out all of the extended pieces that make Agile really function. So Agile teams try to draw on immediate feature development and delivery, and they oftentimes ignore, for example, infrastructure and architectural best practices to make it happen. Uh, sometimes they don't even go through the process of doing any kind of mapping to make sure what they're about to build maps to what the consumer wants. So these approaches lead to big problems. Um, Short-term focus over a long-term vision. You're focused on what you could do today to make a difference, which is great, but you also need to have that long-term vision in mind. And that could be the North Star for the organization or the long-term vision for a product or service. Compromise quality and security. Sometimes when you're just in a rush to get something out, you're putting aside quality. Uh, there's no quality management system in place. You're feeding the hidden factory. We can go on and on about this. And security just really is put on a back burner. And I know it sounds crazy, but it, whether it's software or any other application, we need to be mindful of uh, those things. If you're talking about something specifically software, you end up with fragmented code base and repositories, uh, fragmented repositories, everything just becomes disjointed. It becomes hard to make things clear. And of course, the big one, uh, you end up accumulating technical debt and all these things that you're doing, oh, we'll just do a quick fix or work around. And, and what winds up happening is you just end up making this hodgepodge mess of things that could have been done so much better. So to address all of those issues, it's important to do some things up front. And I already let you in on a couple of them. So the first one's right out of the gate are ideation and discovery. You need to make sure that you're taking the time to vet out ideas, to make sure they're good ideas and they're in line with your North Star vision. You need to do discovery, whether it's identifying targeted personas, writing a great elevator pitch, uh, whether it's going in and doing architectural mapping or story mapping or journey mapping to make sure you're mapping the consumer who's going to use your product to how the product's going to be used, laying out that that runway for architecture, for infrastructure, for how the how the patterning, the journey is going to go for that customer. You should focus on continual refactoring and making sure that you're continually making efforts to renew and uh, refactor code as opposed to trying to carve out, um, you know, just a rewrite of an entire system. It, it doesn't make sense. You need to make sure that you're continually doing the things necessary to stand up and to work forward. You also want to make sure that you have a balance between short-term goals and long-term goals, whether it's short-term feature development or long-term feature development and underlying architecture and infrastructure for software. You want to make sure that you understand the needs of the consumer implicitly and that you're not spinning your wheels in delivery or the development process without knowing the first two. And then finally, a collaborative approach. You need to encourage collaboration between developers and stakeholders, between architects, between architects and developers, between developers and stakeholders, between you know product owners and business analysts and functional analysts and technical analysts and team members. I just think that if you don't have a collaborative communicative approach, an environment of psychological safety, where people feel like they have an ecosystem where radical candor rules, you're not going to get anywhere. You're going to need to realign everything in order to be able to really do your job well. And I think that it boils down to having a top five list, if you will. So I'm going to give you top five things that have to happen in order for the teams to be productive. Here we go. Number one, right out of the gate, communicate, communicate, communicate. Teams need to talk to each other. They need to talk to stakeholders. They need to talk to other people. We need to open up patterns and pathways for communication. And I want to make sure I emphasize, I'm not talking about meeting overload. I'm talking about people being available to talk to each other when there's a need. Yes? How about this? This one's going to blow your mind. When it comes time to make the big decisions, make sure you have input from the team as part of the decision. If, the if you expect the team to depend on each other daily, they should also be able to depend on each other and talk about big decisions with the product owner, especially if it's stuff that's going to impact the smaller stuff they have to do later. 
So I think it's important that whenever there's big decisions made that the team is included, whether it's through a technical analyst or that it's through some other type of assessment, we need to make sure the team's included. How about this? Allowing teams to decide on their own when necessary, but not necessarily deciding everything. And what I mean by that is teams need to have some autonomy. They need to have freedom to make some decisions, but they shouldn't always feel like they have to make every decision, right? So you need to make sure you have that balance and understand where the team's technical prowess is, what they can do, or where the team's prowess is, period, and how we can let them have autonomy, but at the same time still have some control. Of course, next, number four, leaders should guide the teams. We need to make sure we have a North Star. We need to make sure we have leadership that's willing to step in and help the team understand what's going on while independent is good, don't get me wrong. Working together towards the bigger picture is better. And I think this is the whole need for a functional analyst, right? Someone who represents and works closely with the leadership team, but someone who donates a percentage of their time to the team to make sure they're working closely to make sure we're moving towards the same common North Star. All right. And then last but not least, number five, is keep all the moving parts working together. This is where scaling comes into play. I think that too often people and organizations jump straight to scaling and they miss the fact that you need to make sure that you adjust or pivot when necessary, but you also need to make sure you're having that cross team and cross product owner communication so that you can make sure you have everything running like a well oil machine. So Agile has tons and tons of tools. And if you haven't seen the Agile landscape, hit me up for an email, uh, learn more at agiledad.com, and I'll be happy to send you a copy of it. But this is where you'll learn that there's a hundred different ways to do things. And anyone who's ever approached Discipline Agile Delivery, they have the whole you know 300 plus page book of uh, choosing your way of working. And what that means is, yeah, there are a hundred different ways to do things, but it doesn't mean you need to try all 100. So, <laughs> While Agile can be confusing to some, if you break it down to its simplest form, Agile can really provide people with answers and with information and with tools that they need in order to be successful. And I can say with confidence after working with so many Agile teams that while this author tended to make things seem so grim, I'm going to say the future looks bright for Agile going forward. And I'm excited to see the things that come next. That's going to do it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have something you want us to talk about, feel free to reach out to us. Learn more at AgileDad.com, where I'd love to hear from you. As always, we encourage you to stay healthy, stay well, and stay agile, my friends. Until next time, do take care.